Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Life is really hard for a lot of people, man. We got people that are just still trying to find jobs. I've talked to so many people that are getting medical diagnoses, and I just want to encourage you with something. Last week, I talked to a guy who's a um, a chaplain at MD Anderson, which is a, a it's kind of a, the, the cancer hospital you go to for last resort. Like if you're in a bad situation, he, he's a chaplain over there, and he says he's been doing this for years, and he said he is seeing incredible, miraculous healings right now of all kinds of sicknesses, illnesses, cancers. He said there was a guy that came. Uh, a, a guy, a very powerful guy that all of a sudden they found out he had cancer everywhere in his body. They said it's in your liver, your kidneys, your, it had gone to his lymph nodes, to his brain. They said basically go home, clean up your affairs. We'll give you one last shock treatment to see if we can get things done. Came back. They did all these scans and they discovered literally not a cell of cancer in his body. Gone miraculously. <laughs> you know... Doctors, I'm so grateful for them, but they are not hope dealers. They are also not all-knowing, and they are not the final authority. So some of you guys this morning, man, you're worried because right now you're waiting to get back that. I know how it is. Last year, I remember that. I'm still getting bills from that stupid stupid cancer thing last year, right? You know, they, they're like, it's so urgent, and then it takes three weeks to get back the, the urgent uh, data on, on how to do it's It's ridiculous. But anyways... I know that feeling of waiting. And listen, I want to tell you this. There's a verse that says, it says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, through prayer and petition, that's just giving your request to God. Present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. That means you shouldn't be feeling peace because the doctor said it's not looking good. You shouldn't be feeling peace because you're still three months in and there's no job still on the horizon. But the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, goes beyond understanding. You shouldn't have it. It says, we'll guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So I just want to encourage you guys, man, it ain't over till the Lord himself says it's over. He gets the final say. And I'll be honest, man, sometimes he's way slower than I want him to be. I'm like, you, you could rush, you could speed up the timeline a little, Lord. He seems to come in at the last moment, but he will come through. Stay in faith. Don't lose hope. Stay confident that you will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You're in the living land, so be confident that you will see God's goodness. I just want to throw that out to you guys, man, because I just, I believe we're in a time right now where we're going to see God come through with some miraculous healings, provision in ways that he says, my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter what the economy looks like. It doesn't matter what the economy looks like. God's kids will be cared for as we lean and trust in him and lean on him, not our own understanding. So, all right, let me close in prayer. I'm just kidding. That wasn't my sermon. Hey, we're going to talk about something today that that could be a little bit uncomfortable. Some people, first service was very quiet. And I've learned when people are very quiet, it means they're listening very closely. So we're going to talk today about boundaries. Now, we're in a society right now that has taken a lot of words and totally hijack them and use them incorrectly. And I think boundaries is one of those words. We've used it as a way to build walls around ourselves, to just be mean and harsh with people. And I'm not talking about boundaries as an an excuse today to just be mean and harsh with people and protect your heart. I'm talking about boundaries in a very specific way. And and this is going to be hard for some people because I know this about everybody in this room. We all kind of lean to one extreme or another. I naturally have really strong boundaries. So much so that my problem is sometimes letting the wall down and letting people in, okay? But I think I'm a minority. I think for most people, our problem, because y'all are loving people, I'm not, right? I'm just kidding. I think we've we've believed a lie that compassion and love is having no boundaries and letting people come and go as they please in your life and you having to pour out to them. And, and this is what's tricky about it. If you read the Bible, there's no command, thou shalt have good boundaries. I wish it was in there, but it's not. You have to look at the life of Jesus and kind of look like, how did Jesus have boundaries? And he did have boundaries. So we're going to look at that today. But I want to tell a story first. I'll never forget this moment. I think I was about six, six seven years old. And I'll never forget where I was. I was in this doorway between the living room and the kitchen. And I was mad at my mom about something. And I was ranting and yelling at my mom. And my dad came around the corner. And he rarely got mad. But he turned around and he's like, hey, kid, that's my wife you're talking to. 
Don't ever disrespect her that way again because she'll be with me long after you're gone. And I was like, whoa. And I remember that moment distinctly because it was a clear reality to me that my dad loved my mom more than me. (laughs) But it was kind of reassuring in a way because here's why it was reassuring. He was confident that I was going to leave the house one day, but he was still going to be with my mom. So there was this security of knowing they ain't going anywhere. They're going to work this out together. And it created this this real safety for me. And, And I am convinced that boundaries create safety. In fact, this is like, I, I think every one of us in our life right now, if there's some area of your life where y- you would say this, look, I just want peace and I want everyone to get along. <laughs> you, you have that? Like, you're like, why is it that every time my mother comes over, she and my wife get into it? Or as soon as she leaves, my wife is like, what is wrong with your mother? <laughs> right? This happens a lot. And you're just like, can't my wife and my mom just get along? Can't they? <laughs> or, or you've got every time you're on the phone call with your son, it just explodes. And you're like, what, what happened here? We were having a good conversation, and then I said the wrong word. And it's like, can't we just get along? Doesn't he know I love him? Mm. We all have these relationships. Maybe you have a relationship at work where you're like, my boss, can't he just leave me alone? Let me do my thing. I'm doing a good job. You do your thing, boss. I'll do my thing. Leave me alone. Can't we just be at peace? We all have these relationships in our life where we go, I just want peace and for everyone to get along. Now, I understand, like, some of you in here love drama, okay? But I think that's the minority. Most of us want peace, and we just want everybody to get along. And and I'm convinced of this, okay? Look, I think the key to peace is really strong boundaries. Now, when I talk about boundaries, here's what tends to happen. Unhealthy people have unhealthy boundaries. Now, unhealthy boundaries can go one of two ways. Unhealthy boundaries can be there's no, there's no rules, there's no limits to who comes in and out of your life, no matter what they, what they can do. There's that. And then the other, what tends to happen is when I talk about this, everybody kind of swings to the other extreme, and they, turn, they like build a wall. Build a wall! <laughs> and nobody's getting in. The place we got to be, though, is somewhere in the middle. I'm not calling you to just run out and go, build a wall. I'm cutting everybody off. No more, Mom. You ain't coming to the house. I'm not calling you to do that. I'm calling you to be wise about this, and it's tricky. But we're going to talk about how to kind of evaluate what is a good boundary because I'm convinced that a boundary isn't about who you're going to cut out. A boundary is about who you're going to prioritize love, how you're going to prioritize love. A boundary is prioritized love. In 1 Peter, it says this. It says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. And I'm convinced of this, that if, if, if the thing that makes people do squirrely stuff, this is, this is so important. The squirrely things people do, the ridiculous things people do, the harmful things people do, the older I get, I've listened to people for thousands of hours in counseling, it's always driven by fear. For some people... It's driven by a fear of not having safety. If you've got a narcissist in your life and you're like, what is their problem? They're so manipulative and domineering. They are desperately afraid people. What they're afraid of is not having safety or security. So you're like, what's wrong with them? There's some sort of fear driving them. For some people, the addiction that they're driving them, their obsession with kind of like one thing to another is fear of a lack of connection or rejection in their life. What's wrong with them? Why do they keep doing this? Why can't they see? It's like, well, there's some sort of fear of rejection or lack of connection driving them. For, like, for me, if you ever see Joel doing something weird and you're like, what is wrong with Joel? I guarantee you this. I'm afraid of not having control or being empowered in a situation. It's always the case. If you ever, if you ever have an interaction with me, you're like, Joel is a freak. I guarantee you <laughs> it's because I'm afraid in some way of being controlled. So we've all got these fears that are driving us, right? And I'm convinced that, look, this is what I'm convinced of. When boundaries are clear, it removes fear. When we've got a sense of safety around us and an understanding of where the lines are, we have freedom. And this has been shown. There was a very famous study that was done. It's been done different ways where there was this new school that was built, and it was right along this super busy road. 
And they found that when they opened the school, the kids, there was no fence, the kids would all stay kind of clustered right by the teacher during break, during recess. But as soon as they built a fence, the kids like ventured out to all areas of the playground. And what they've shown is with kids particularly, kids need very strict boundaries because they need to know what's safe, what can I do, where can I go, what's, and they want to feel protected. And so with kids, they need super strict boundaries. You do this, you don't do this. You go here, you don't do, go here. Now, as you grow older, you can grow a little bit out of that. But to start with, we all need super strict boundaries. That's why the Lord, gave, God gave us the law. It was to protect us and to show us how to live in harmony with the world. He says, hey, Every time you do this, it's not going to go well. So don't do that. It's going to harm you and those around you. It's a boundary. And when you know where the boundaries are, the Lord's like, go run and play. Just don't do these things. That's what he did in the Garden of Eden. He says, you got the whole place. Just don't do this one thing. We broke the boundary. And what did we have immediately? Fear. When boundaries are clear, it removes fear. But we have to recognize the importance of boundaries. And this is what we live in a world right now that says... Well, real love is just letting people do, be, be you, go be you. But them being you, them is destroying themselves. It's literally like saying, hey, you go be you. And then they run out on the road and get run over. <laughs> and then they come back and they're like, why didn't you warn me? Well, I didn't want to judge. But you let me get hit by a car. <clears throat> hey, man, you be you. And we live in this world that has this false idea of what compassion is. And we say compassion is just, it's just tolerating people's mental illnesses or things like that. And you say, no, that's not, God doesn't mean, like, we need to intervene in some ways. Now, it's not saying they don't exist, but it's recognizing it. But you don't let people continue going towards their destruction. And what we've done is what we started to do in our world is we've said, there's these institutions that are patriarchal. Or matriarchal, and they need to be torn down. King Solomon says very clearly, says, don't remove an ancient boundary stone set up by your fathers. There are certain things that have been established by God and tested by society throughout time that hold true and are established. One of those is marriage. We'll talk about that in a minute. The foundation of a healthy society is a man and a woman coming together, procreating and having kids and building a safe environment for those kids. When you destroy that, you literally open up the fence, and people go into the road, and they end up getting destroyed. There's this book out right now that I named like Priscilla, uh, or um, uh, Abigail Shire, I think her name is. It's called Irreversible Damage, and she's talking about how this idea that as soon as a kid thinks that they're a girl or a boy or whatever, they have this gender dysphoria, if you go and mutilate them immediately, <coughs> so many of them are regretting it later as they get older, and they're going, oh my gosh, but it's irreversible damage has been done, because we thought, well, that must be them. What they believe about themselves at seven years old must be true. And we let them wander out into the street. And they're damaged for the rest of their life because we have refused to acknowledge there are boundaries and you don't cross those boundaries. And we do that societally, but we also have to do that personally. And the crazy thing about boundaries is it's God's love that put those boundaries in for us so that we could run free and be safe and know we had protection around us. But when we break those boundaries down, it creates Fear. So I want to talk specifically about a couple of boundaries. Uh, well, first of all, let's talk about Jesus and his boundaries, okay? So a lot of people would say, well, this doesn't sound very Jesus-like. Because this is the challenge with prioritizing love. Prioritizing love means there's a balance of inclusion and exclusion. Because there are some people that they don't get the right to every part of you. Because if you try and love everything equally, you're loving nothing. Love requires prioritizing who gets the best of you and the most important part of you. That's just part of the deal. It's recognizing that there are certain people that deserve bet more of your time and energy. And again, this is a weird thing in our world because we're like, oh, compassion is just letting everyone be loved equally. And it's just like, love is love. Really? Would you say that if it was a guy and a dog? <laughs> it's a flawed premise. Would you say that if it was a guy and a child? Jesus had these strict boundaries. There's this verse in Mark. It's really fascinating. He says this. Jesus, there's this, been this crowd around him, right? And they're all like, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And he breaks away from the crowd. And he says, Jesus went up on a mountain. And he called to him those he wanted. 
he handpicked some people that he wanted in his inner circle. And they came to him, and he appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and have authority to drive out demons. And what's fascinating about this is you see then he names them, and he says, first of all, he picked these three guys, Peter, James, and John, and they were his inner circle. You'll see that whenever he did certain miracles, we'll talk about this in a minute, he, he would only have Peter, James, and John with him, his inner core circle. But then he had his 12 as well, and then he had the crowds. And there were many times where the crowd would, there's one verse where it says the crowd decided they wanted to make him king, and he ran away from them because he said he, he knew what was in their hearts, and he didn't entrust himself to them. You don't entrust yourself to the crowd. You only entrust yourself to that small inner circle that have proven themselves trustworthy. Even Jesus did this. And there's a really fascinating part. The second part of this verse is really uncomfortable to me. It says, then Jesus' mothers and brothers arrived. Jesus was doing all this teaching, doing all these miracles. And they were standing outside, and they sent someone in to call him. And a crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, hey, your mom and your brothers are outside looking for you. Your mom's here, bro. Who? <laughs> and he's like, who are my mother and my brothers, he asked. And he says, then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, here are my mother and my brothers, whoever does God's will as my brother and sister and mother. It's very uncomfortable because at some point Jesus had to say, I'm even going to have to separate myself from my family whom I love to accomplish the purpose that's within me. Yeah. That's the tricky part about boundaries. Sometimes you don't get to choose who is in your circle, but you do get to choose if they, whether they stay in that circle or not long term or whether you decide to love them from a distance for a while. Because if they're doing damage to your priorities and who you're, the, who you're prioritizing love to, you've got a problem there. And that's where I want to talk about three specific. Each of these could be a sermon in itself, so I'm going to blow through it, all right? Well, one of the most important boundaries, I think, is commitment through marriage. Listen, this is a very important verse. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. There comes a point when you have to separate yourself from your family, and you and your spouse create your own unit. Now, this gets tricky because, you know, a successful mom is a failed mom because moms want to protect their little sons in particular, keep them under their wing forever. <laughs> and they see that, that girl that they're married to, and like, well, he, she's not feeding him well. And they come in and start commenting on your wife's cooking. And you sit back and you're like, why can't they just get along? And then whenever mom leaves, your wife's like, why don't you defend me? Well, y'all need to talk it out. <laughs> I don't want to get involved. I love both of y'all. Well, listen, there comes a point where you've got to prioritize one of them. And this verse seems to say, you got to leave mommy, boys. And some of you moms are like, well, if I leave him to that woman, he's going to die and shrivel up. <laughs> this is part of the process. And men, it's on your shoulders to do this. And listen, because whenever priorities are clear, it removes fear in your spouse. Whenever the boundary is clear, mom, I love you to death, but you will die if you keep doing this to my wife. <laughs> Don't say that. But anyway. It's an important boundary that we have to establish and understand, right? An another reality is, 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 is like there are certain people in our life that may not respect our marriage. Listen, women do not flirt with me. I know that sounds ridiculous. I am an incredibly attractive man. <laughs> and it's not because I run around going, get away, woman. Get away, I'm married. Don't. That's, that's my wedding finger, by the way. <laughs> wedding ring. That's a wedding ring, I promise. Anyway. I don't have to do that because here's why. This boundary is so clear in my mind, I don't, I don't project in any way that I'm interested in breaking that boundary. And listen, I have people tell me all the time, I don't know why those girls flirt with me all the time and my wife gets so jealous. Listen, brother, you're projecting that you're open to it. Let's be honest. You can sense that. You can sense when someone plays along with the flirting or whatever. But if you're projecting, I have no interest in, I'm, I've got a Trumpian wall right here, and we ain't going past that in my marriage, right? <laughs> I'm going to tick everybody off this morning at some point. Anyway, 
This is huge, right? And, and here's the thing. Marriage is really important because it's the foundation of trust in society. And listen, I talk to people all the time. And they're like, well, we're, we're living together. We're just not quite ready to get married. They're like, how long have you been together? Oh, 10 years. <laughs> 10 years? And, well, we both, neither of us want to get married. But I hear the girl that actually she does want to get married. But she's gotten tired of harassing the boy about it. And she's like, well, if I say anything, she's living in fear. If I say anything, he might leave me. And he's like, dude, this is sweet. I get sex for free. Don't owe her any money. We're all doing our keep our accounts separate. This is a score deal. He's never going to say anything. Right. When boundaries are clear, for, people are forced to step up. Right. And you go, Joel, that's not, just not very realistic. I want you to look at the stats of people who live together before marriage and divorce. And here's one I'm really going to step on toes. Y'all know I love you, but I'm going to say this. I see a lot of fear in kids because you got divorced. Ladies, I'm going I'm to harp on you here for a second. And you're bringing every boyfriend home with you. And you're wondering why your kids are acting up. They don't know who to trust. Google the stats on how much child molestation happens by boyfriends. It creates fear. I have a friend. This is amazing. His wife flipped out on him, went crazy. He had a daughter in the house. He raised the daughter. He met this wonderful woman. But as he talked to his daughter, he sensed she wasn't ready to have someone new in the house. So he held off on getting married to this woman. Didn't, no overnights with her for 10 years. I'm like, that is a man right there. Like, you are a bad man. Like, <laughs> he had that boundary. He said, I'm, my prioritized love goes to my daughter. And I want to keep that relationship strong. So I'm going to hold off. I love this woman. And now they're married. As soon as they, the daughter moved out of the house, went off to college, he said, hey, I'm going to marry this girl. And she's like, Dad, thank you. Thank you for honoring me with that. Like, and man, him and his daughter are like that. That was hard. Ten years of being alone to prioritize love. And I understand some of you are like, well, don't I deserve to be loved? Yes, you do. But listen, sometimes God asks us to do really hard stuff. And bringing that boyfriend around, every new boyfriend you've got, is creating fear in your children. And you're wondering why they're acting up directly connected to that because the boundary needs to be right here you notice it's a perfect circle the boundary needs to be marriage and when there's marriage there's a safety and protection there there's a commitment level god didn't ask us for marriage for, for some ridiculous reason it's not a patriarchal oppressive system moving on everyone's super quiet the important personal boundary of personal values and standards. Listen to me. This is an intense verse. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming age. He's like, keep your eyes focused on Jesus. And as obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, you be holy in all you do. Holy means set apart. For it is written, be holy because I'm holy. And what that means is there are going to be times when other people are doing stuff that's perfectly fine. It's not even sin. But God says, I can't, you can't do that. Being obedient to that call. My dad would tell me that all the time. Like, dad, other kids are watching rated R movies. He's like, that's other kids. Our family, we don't do that. Others can, we will not. And he set a really high standard. And there may be times where you have to have some awkward conversations with people and you say, listen, I'm not judging how you're living your life, but the, what that's showing to my kids, I can't have that around. When I leave my kids with you and you let them watch those kind of movies that you know I don't approve of, I'm sorry, my kids can't hang out with you anymore. Grandma, grandpa, you either abide by these rules of what we will let our kids watch, by what we'll let our kids eat, or we're going to have to kind of love you at a distance for a while. You go, well, that's cold-blooded. Prioritizing love. What does, who deserves the most love? And the order is God, your spouse, your kids, and then the rest of it's kind of up for grabs. And it changes. But if you've got friends that are constantly questioning your values, and well, you think you're better than us, and they're dragging you down, man, I, I've talked to people that, man, they break their standards quicker than they can lower them when they're around certain people. You're like, man, I just, well, I guess it's okay, and everybody else is doing it. And you know it's not okay. You feel that conviction in your heart. 
Sometimes you're going to have to remove people because their values are not in line with your values. And you have to have the awkward conversation like, I'm sorry, my kid can't play with your kid anymore. And we're not judging you. We're okay with how you're doing your thing, but we're going to do our thing. But every time my kid's with you, they come back and it's just not rolling that well. Well, how could you, how do you think you're better than us? I don't think I'm better than this. I just have to prioritize love and what I feel is the proper values for our family. You guys do your thing. We're going to, we'll bless you. We pray for you. We just can't have our kids hanging out right now. And that's okay. It's not being mean. You do it with compassion and grace, right? And it's, again, this is where it's tricky too because sometimes you build too strong of a wall and then you isolate your kids and you don't want to isolate them and protect them too much because they need to learn how to be strong. It's very tricky, but here's the gift. You have the Holy Spirit living within you who can guide you in this. And you seek guidance and counsel from those who are around you that can help guide you in this path. You seek people that have, are working, walking this journey and they seem like they're doing it right. Here's another boundary because we're running out of time and I've got a lot more to talk about. Uh, respect for time and wisdom. A man's days are numbered. You know the number of his months. He cannot live longer than the time you have set. You know, you've only got a few number, a certain amount of time, energy, and days on this earth. I used to have this guy who would call me every night, worst possible time, six o'clock right at dinner time, and he'd ask me all this advice. He'd pour out his sorrows to me for an hour, and I'd be like, oh, I'm going to help him. I'm going to help him. You know, Emily's like, dinner's ready, and I'm like, well, let me help him. Let me help him. He called me a week later, and he basically went and did the complete opposite of everything we talked about in the last phone call. And now he's like, how do I clean this mess up? And I'm like, you, I, oh, well, let me help him. Yeah, but I, I had this moment, this epiphany one time. I'm like, this dude is pulling me away from the people I really love, and I like this guy. But he doesn't deserve this much of my attention. And he's not doing, he has no respect for the wisdom I'm offering him. So I'm not going to do it anymore. And I told him, I said, hey, bro. Be blessed. I don't have time for this anymore. Check in with me every once a month or two, but we can't do these weekly phone calls. It's just got to be, I've got to give that time to my, to my wife and, and, and my daughter. And he was like, dude, what, what, did I make you mad? And like, what do you think you're, you know, like, what, what's the deal? And I'm like, it's just, I, I've just got to focus my love right now on my family. And he, you know, I'm sure he thought I was cold-blooded, but I got a lot more time for my wife because he wasn't taking up my time. And he, and, and, and he, the respect, he had no respect for wisdom. And listen, there's some times where you're going to have people that just don't respect what you bring to the table. Sometimes this happens at work. You've got a boss, and he's not having respect for your time, what, what the contract was, and he's asking more for you and pay, asking you to do stuff he's not paying for you for. You may need to have a hard conversation. You may need to say, hey, look, I love this job, but that wasn't in the deal. And this is where it gets tricky because if you feel like you're being abused or tyrannized, you have to either decide, is it, am I truly being abused or tyrannized? Like, is this out of, out of bounds? Or is this just part of being an adult and I got to suck it up, buttercup? Like, which one is it? But if you are being abused, it's up to you to say something about it. Because sometimes they don't even know. Sometimes they're just like, you know, I, this is another thing. I've heard, heard bosses all the time. They're like, why can't I keep employees? And then I talk to one of the employees and they're like, well, he was always asking me to do stuff off the clock and blah, blah, blah. And I'll talk to the, the, the owner and they're like, well, I'm the owner. Like, they just, they're just not, their heart's not in it as much as I am. I'm like, well, that's because you're the owner, man. Like, of course their heart's not in it as much. And you're not respecting their time with their family, so they're not going to even give you any more extra. And there has to be this mutual respect between employer and employee, because if they're asking stuff from you that you, it's, it's, they're not, you know, and you're, again, as a boss, you're like, well, they should just have their heart in it more. Well, they're not gonna. It's your baby. And if you want people to respect it as much as you do, you respect their time. I turned down an outstanding job one time, an outstanding job. I mean, like, really good job. Because I saw they're not going to have the boundaries. They're, they're going to control my life. And I was like, I'll turn down the job if you're going to control my life. Again, freaky things Joel does always have to do with control, right? But I turned it down. And it would have been an outstanding job. We would have made more money than I've seen in my whole life. But I knew, I was like, the boundaries are going to be off here. So there comes a time, right, where at some point you might have to remove people from the inner circle, the core, because they're not respecting the boundaries that you've set up for yourself. And there's this verse where Jesus, he gets asked to come heal this girl, right? It's a guy named Jairus. He says, come heal my daughter. Well, by the time they get to the house, they find out the girl is dead. Well, Jesus comes in to the room, and unfortunately, a very important part of this verse got cut out, the key point. But it says this, and when they came to the ruler's house and saw the flute players, that means she's dead. The flute players come out and they start playing over the dead body. That was a Hebrew tradition. And the crowd making a commotion, he said, go away. The girl is not dead, but she's sleeping. And it says he, they laughed at him. But he sent the crowd out of the house and he only kept, again, this got cut out of the verse, sorry, Peter, James, and John. He said, for what's about to go down here, 
I need my inner circle here. I need the support of my inner circle, the people I can trust. And he sent them out, and then he did this miracle. And he, and he says, the, by his hand, the girl arose, and the report of this went through all the district. There comes a time when you may have to go, who's in my inner circle? And are the people in my inner circle pushing me to become all I can be? Or are they holding me back, and they're stepping over boundaries that they have no business stepping over? So I want to talk real quick about what makes a good inner circle. First thing, a good inner circle is full of people that you can tell bad news to. Now, that's easy enough. But this is where you really have the, the, the barometer, the test. Can you tell good news to them as well without them being envious or trying to cut you down? So a lot of people like to hear your bad news because they're like, ha, ha, yeah, good. I'm a little better than them, right? <laughs> but can they rejoice and go, man, I'm, you've had a hard go, and I am so glad to see that God is blessing you and this is happening for you. Can they rejoice with you? The Bible says rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. Do you have people in your life who can rejoice with you? Because a lot of you, actually, what you have are frenemies. There are people that really are rejoicing in seeing your demise, rejoicing in seeing you compromise your values, rejoicing in seeing your marriage on the rocks because it makes them feel better about their marriage. Third, you can receive bad news from them, including correction. One of my mentors, he's in my inner circle. He's been there since he was 15. I can't tell you how many times I'll call him up, like, blah, 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 and he'll tell me this. You're an idiot. You need to get over yourself verbatim those are the exact words he will say you're an idiot Joel. you're still an idiot he told me that the other day he's like, even after 40 years you're still an idiot but i love you and you need to get over yourself wounds from a friend can be trusted but an enemy multiplies kisses and then the third thing that makes for a good inner circle is this there's a mutual respect for those important boundaries do you have friends that are respecting your marriage and trying to help your marriage be strong, or are they trying to pull you away from your marriage? Let's go out to the bar. Come on, your wife's fine. And your wife's sitting at home waiting for you, looking to connect. Is it somebody that recognizes, respects your values? They may not agree completely with you on your values, but they're saying, I respect that. We have mutual respect. Are they people that have that mutual respect for those important boundaries in your life? If you have people that are in your inner circle that aren't doing that, maybe they're messing with your marriage, maybe they're telling you, oh, you could do better than her. They got to go. Because when boundaries are clear, it eliminates fear. And maybe some of the struggles you're having in your family with your marriage right now is because your wife is really worried. She sees you don't have clear boundaries, and that's why she's worried every time you go out that you're going to go out and do something dumb. When boundaries are clear, it removes fear. And listen, this is really important, okay? Because I know some of us were afraid of rejection. If someone cuts you off because you have healthy boundaries, that person was holding you back from becoming all you could be. Sometimes you got to choose who you're going to lose. So, well, that seems so cold-blooded and unloving. Jesus did. Sometimes he said, man, I love you, but you're going to be in the 12, not in the 3. And some... There's one guy where he's like, I want to follow you, Jesus. And he's like, all right, come on right now. He's like, well, I got to do all this other stuff. And Jesus like, then you don't get to be in the inner circle. And he said, all right, you can come listen to me anytime. I'll be here. But you don't get to be in the inner circle and get access to the deeper parts. Because remember, it's a balance of inclusion and exclusion. It's prioritizing love for those who get it the most. And listen, I believe that God has greater things in your life for you than you can even imagine for yourself. He's exceedingly abundantly. I mean, that's our theme this year. There's more for you. But oftentimes to get to more, uh, you have to remove some things. There's a famous quote by Saint, uh, Antoine de saint -Exupéry. He says, perfection is achieved not when there's nothing more to be added, but when there's nothing more to be removed. Sometimes you need to add stuff, but oftentimes you need to remove stuff that's holding you back. And so if you've maybe had somebody leave your life recently because you started to have some healthy boundaries, you got healthy, There's a good chance they were holding you back anyway. So rejoice that the Lord graciously removed them from your life. And they may come back in your life, so don't burn the bridge. Just love them at a distance. They may come back in one day. They get healthy. You're both healthy, and you're like, wow. Isn't this amazing that the Lord brought us together? I just had a reconciliation last week that I never thought would happen with somebody. Totally burned me, that person. But they came back, and I mean, it's reconciled. It's amazing. God can do exceedingly abundantly far above all you can ask or think in your life. But he asks you to do some hard things sometimes, to make some hard choices up front for your family. When boundaries are clear, man, you're going to find fear is removed in your life. You guys receive that? Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you so much 
that you loved us so much you sent your only son to come down. And I thank you, Lord, that your son exhibited for us what it looks like to have this healthy interaction with, with others. So I pray for those this morning, man, maybe they, they're realizing, shoot, my prioritized love has been out of order. I've been giving too much love to my kids and not enough to my spouse or too much love to my mom and not enough to my wife or whatever it is, Lord, I pray that you would just give them the courage and the grace to make the steps they need to take, to take those steps to get things in order so that there's confidence in their family, confidence within themselves. When boundaries are clear, it removes that fear. And we thank you, Lord, your perfect love drives out fear. If you're here this morning and you have not accepted Jesus' perfect love, his forgiveness of your sins, I want to offer you a chance right now to make that right. You already know who you are. You've been feeling it in your heart, the conviction. I'm going to pray in just a second. If you say this prayer and you mean it with your whole heart, Jesus is going to come. He's going to forgive you of all your sins. He's going to transfer you out of the kingdom of darkness. He's going to put you in the kingdom of light, set you up with an eternal address with him in eternity. It starts when we say this prayer. Let's all say it together. Lord Jesus, we repent of our sin. We turn from our way. We turn to your way. Help us walk in your truth. Man. Hey, if you just said that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. We've got some resources for you in the back. Man, I pray you guys this week, be wise, be wise. Who's in your inner circle? Pray about it. And man, if, if some people need, maybe some of you need to bring some people in that you've been pushing out. But be blessed. Y'all have a great week. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.